All right, so I am pleased with how I've lined everything up. Now it's time to submit it and turn it in, make sure it meets the requirements. And then I'll show you some, some extra finishing approaches we can use. That might be fun. So first of all, notice how it's pretty close to this edge, pretty close to this edge. Maybe I want to select everything and bring it down a little bit. So all these layers that are turned on, these are layers that are used in the image. To select them all, I'm just going to click on the top layer, hold down Shift, and click on the last layer. I can also hold the Command key and individually choose the ones I want to select. So you can select multiple layers at once. When they're all selected, then I can use the Move tool. And instead of just moving or transforming one layer, it will move all of them. And you see it will move it down a little bit. But there's a white bar there that belongs to one of the layers that I'll need to delete. Come on. There we go. So my guess is it's on this layer. Sorry, computer's being a little slow to respond. Yes, so I'm going to take that layer and I'm just going to use the rectangular marquee selection. Zoom in, make sure I don't cut off the top of the hair, and then delete. Okay, so I have everything nice and clean and cut out. Now if I go to my directions, How do I turn it in? So we're going to flatten all of the layers into one layer, but you want to make sure you save it as a PSD before you do this. When you flatten it, it will fill the empty gridded background with white. And then we're going to save it as a JPEG, just as the directions say. And then attach it to our canvas post. or embed it within, which is even better, so we can all see it. So make sure you save it as your PSD. And I like to verify that by opening up my class folder and seeing that it's changed and saved. And now you see it's kind of more centered in there. Now I can say, layer, flatten image, it's at the very bottom. And that will compress all of our layers into just one. And you see it fills in that background with white. And there might be little areas where some of the line art isn't super clean, and that's okay. This is just an exercise. And we can always go back in and refine this through our PSD. Okay, now instead of saying save or save as PSD, we want to export it. And we're going to export it as a JPEG. This will go to our downloads folder, but it will keep the name that we renamed our PSD. So there it is. I like to move that into my class folder. So that I have both my PSD, which I mark green, and my JPEG, which I mark as orange. So orange means it's made for online display. Green means that it's a working format that I can still open up in PhotoP or Photoshop and continue working on. Then I go to where I put my book selection and my post within the assignment, the graded discussion with the directions. I click on the three dots and say edit. I click down a few lines to give some space and then I click on the little 
Mountains and Sun upload. And I can drag and drop my JPEG in. This is just the black line art. It fulfills all the requirements. And then I can resize it. So it's easy to see on screen. And there it is. And if you want a little bit of space at the bottom, you can always edit that in too. Just a few clicks underneath it. Hit return a few times. Okay, now for the special features. If I want to add texture to it. So sexual assault is not a fun thing to contemplate. And that's why the book is on so many bands lists. And, but I'm going to try to find kind of a color or texture that might show that kind of violence. Um, let's see. I'll just save it to my downloads. It's not very big, so it's going to look soft. I like this one. We'll have a lot of practice like sourcing images. I'm going to save that to downloads. And I like this one quite a bit. Now these are all created by people. These are all copyrighted. Hmm. But all that's left is this icon of it. So they're all pretty low, low quality. But that should work for just the coloring of our screen based. So just in these final minutes, I'm going to show you how we can follow these tips, these bonus extra finishings. And what I'm going to do is drag them on top, just right from my downloads folder. I'm going to drag them across and over my image. I'll move it to the very top. And then I'm going to select all my layers underneath. And I'm going to hold down Option and then say Layer Merge Layers, which is different than Flatten. And if I hold down Option, it will give me a new layer that combines all of them together. This is very, very helpful for processing. Then I can use my magic wand, select with contiguous turned off all the empty space in the image, and then say select inverse, which swaps it so it's selecting only the black lines. And then I can click on my texture and then say layer duplicate. But if I do layer duplicate, it duplicates the whole layer because it hasn't been rasterized. So I have to rasterize it first. And then if I do Command J, it will cut out just the stamp of my design. And I can do that with multiple textures. And then I can layer them on top of each other, which can be a lot of fun. So let me take this one and do the same. Rasterize it first. Select all the empty space in the merged layer. Go to Select Inverse. Click on the texture layer and then Command J to copy it. And I might review this at the beginning of next class because it's very helpful to remember that we can move things between selections. Now to blend them together, I can use Opacity. 
I can use the different blending styles like multiply, but other ones as well. I particularly like soft light, pin light. These can give some nice effects. And then maybe my last one, just to show you can do this as much as you want. I'm going to really stretch this so it fills the entire space, even though this is for a product that's no longer online to be sold. There's just a remnant little icon of it, but I can use this texture. Because it fits my creative purpose. These are all just the basic compositing skills we've learned. I'm going to rasterize it. Come on. I'm going to select the empty space with contiguous turned off. I'm going to say select inverse and then going to duplicate it from that fabric texture and then going to blend that in. Let's try vivid light. Take opacity down. Let all three of them impact it. I can even try something else. Make it more like a tree color. All right. And then we can do other things like give it a drop shadow. Lots of fun stuff to finish it off. So maybe I'll, I'll show that at the beginning of next class. What you are trying to do, let me save that work, is you are just trying to get something composited together that you can upload as a JPEG to go with the illustration of your book design. All right, you guys are officially dismissed for today. But I am here to help, and I am anxious to help you guys as we...